Okay, so my project was based around a nine week um, veterinary science honours project uh, looking into subacute acidosis and preventing its occurrence in sheep feedlot industries, particularly um, the live export and, and domestic feedlot um, industries. So when we're talking about acidosis, we usually refer to one of two conditions, either acute acidosis where our rumen pH falls below five and we have a predominant um, lactate uh, producing bacteria population. The other condition that we hear about is subacute. Yep. Can you move the this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is uh, subacute acidosis, um, and this is where we have a drop in pH somewhere between uh, five and six, but we get a um, an increase in volatile fatty acid concentrations. So for those of you who aren't aware what volatile fatty acids are, they're the byproduct of fermentation in the rumen. So they provide energy to the rumen microbes as well as to the ruminant itself. And we have three uh, predominant volatile fatty acids that we're concerned about being acetic, butyric and propionoic acid. So we can see from this diagram here, um, basically what we have is our, our grain and we either get a production of lactate or volatile fatty acids depending on the levels of grain we feed and the type of feed that we're giving our, our sheep. So you're probably thinking, okay, so we feed our sheep grain, they become acidotic, why don't they all get sick? It's quite simple, they chew. Saliva production is a, a natural buffer, so it's an alkaline product. It also facilitates rumen fermentation and uh, um, helps keep the, the rumen functioning. So what do we know already? We know that in the dairy industry there's clear and well established guidelines for cattle on what length of fibre should be fed. The targets are to, to feed enough that they uh, maintain production limits but not feed too much that they substitute their grain intake for their um, fibre intake. However, in the sheep industry to date, there's no published um, guidelines or papers uh, for chaff length and what we should be feeding uh, sheep. So this is where we came into it. We set up a trial with 24 first cross weather lambs. They were housed individually and fed a Wheaton chaff and a rolled barley diet. We split them into one of three groups. We fed them either short chaff, which was a standard six mil chaff cut, unchaffed, which was um, our long treatment group, or a medium chaff length, which was somewhere in between about 10 to 15 um, mils in length. The samples we collected um, included rumen fluid, so we tested that for pH levels and VFA concentrations over the first three days of grain feeding and we also collected chaff and grain intakes for 10 days. So what did we find? Basically we found no difference in pH between the three treatment groups over those three days of measurements. We found some differences in volatile fatty acid concentrations but the main result to come out of this was significant differences in intake both at three hours and 24 hours post feeding. So we've got our rumen pH data here. We can see that they all start around 7.2 and as we begin to feed grain they drop down to close to our 6.0 which is what we were aiming for for our subacute acidosis. But as you can see there's actually no difference between any of the groups throughout the sampling period. We've got our total volatile fatty acid concentrations and again the main focus is the last, the last three time points where we were feeding grain and although there's a slight difference here by the end of the, the third day again no differences between the treatment groups. However it's important to note that although there weren't differences, significant differences, the top level of volatile fatty acid concentrations belong to the medium chaff treatment group. If we have a look at our three hour intakes, 
starts to get interesting. We have our short chaff treatment group on top, way out ahead of both our long and medium treatment groups. So remembering this is at three hours post feeding. So we've got two to three times the level of intake for our sheep eating the short chaff. And then we move to our 10 days worth of data on our daily intake. So this was measured um, prior to feeding the next day. So we've got 24 hours worth of intake for our chaff only. We get a peak here at day four. Um, that's where we increase grain from 300 to 450 grams per head. Um, and although intakes are higher for our short chaff group, for the, the 10 days, the important thing to take out of this here is by day 10, again, we had no significant differences in intake between the three groups. We can also see from this that although the intakes were higher, by day eight, when grain levels were heading up towards 600 grams per head per day, the short chaff treatment group had a noticeable decline in intake with the higher levels of grain feeding. The other thing to take out of this is the pattern. So we've got our short chaff intake is quite irregular and cyclic, and this is something that we'd expect with sheep um, suffering some, from subacute acidosis. So although our measurements didn't go beyond day three for our rumen pH and volatile fatty acids, they were showing behaviours that indicated that they may have been tipping into um, subadotic uh, rumen conditions. The other thing to note is our long chaff group, although the intakes aren't as high as our short chaff, it provides a more stable pH, uh, sorry, intake level across, um, across the 10 days. So this indicates to us that um, there's a more stable room and environment across the 10 days of feeding. And of course the obvious one, our, me our medium length just didn't eat their chaff. So what does this mean? The short chaff, we know they eat it, we know they like it, and it provides uh, good pH and VFA levels for the first three days initially. Our medium chaff, it was pretty clear that they don't eat it. Um, it had the lowest pH, again it wasn't significant but it was the lowest of the three, and the VFA levels would be considered uh, reasonable. And our long chaff, we know over the course of 10 days they do eat it. They eat it um, at a constant level and they had reasonable pH and volatile fatty acid levels. So what does this mean to you? Basically from our study we are recommending that short chaff be your um, length of choice for initial feeding. So for your first three to five days when you're introducing grain, um, feed them short chaff. We know they eat it and we know it has no effect on um, grain intake or the rumen parameters. However, following that, if you can change them over to a long chaff treatment group or an unchaffed fibre source, um, this provides a more stable rumen um, environment and we would hope um, controls acidosis better. And I'd just like to thank um, Dr Michael Friend and Edward Clayton for their help with my project.